Welcome to Sri Lanka, aka the Pearl of the Indian Ocean, aka the Island of Spice or Spice Island. We only have a short amount of time here, so we're starting off by going to one of the more famous landmarks here, a wonder of the world, if you will, called Sigiriya. Okay, so how do you get to Sigiriya? From Colombo or Nagumbo, which is where the airport is, you're gonna wanna take a bus to Kuru Negala. The cost of the bus is 235 rupees per person. And keep in mind, if you have large bags with you, you're gonna have to buy a seat just for the bags. That also runs 235 normal ticket price. Now that was a little bit more expensive, but it is for an air conditioning bus. The second, portion of the trip. From Kuru Negala, you want to take a bus and head to Dambula. This is going to be the closest town to Sigiriya, aside from Sigiriya town itself. Cost of that bus, 48 rupees per person. No AC, windows fully ajar. <laughs> from there, you have two options. You can either continue forward and keep trucking towards Sigiriya. Which has a lot of options to stay or you can stay in Dumbula. We stayed in a nice spot in Dumbula, which ran us $30 for one night, including a very lovely breakfast. And now, here you have us, after another bus ride to get from Dumbula to Sigiriya. The total cost of that one was 80 rupees, so 40 rupees per head, one way out here. You can also take a motorbike or a tuk-tuk, but bus is the cheapest, and it's kind of the most local experience. The grounds are massive. They kind of remind us a little bit of uh, Angkor Wat. There's a moat surrounding it, but we can see the rock in the distance, and it's gonna be a good one. The cost to access Sigiriya is 30 US dollars. You can pay in the local currency, or you can pay in US dollar, whichever your preference is. But you cannot pay in credit cards, so make sure you have plenty of cash. 30 US dollars equals about 4,800 rupee. The local price, 50 rupee. When you come here, do be prepared to stand in line. And keep in mind that Sigiriya is an extremely popular tourist site, not only for foreigners, but also for Sri Lankans. So be extremely patient and expect very long lines. But when you get up here, the views are definitely worth it. at the top just to give you a rundown of what to expect and time wise we spent about two hours climbing it from the bottom to the top to spending time at the top to coming back down again it's a pretty interesting experience when you first walk in you pass by some fresco paintings that date back 1500 years ago unfortunately we couldn't film them but aside from that you keep passing through and you'll run through the an area called the mirror wall and the mirror wall was so polished apparently back in the day that when the king was holding his reign, it was rumored that he could see his own reflection in it. From there, you go up to the lion's feet, and there's a staircase that goes all the way up to the top where the ruins are situated. So if you're a history buff, it's definitely the place to be. And if you're not, you should at least do it for the experience and the views. Now, there is an alternative to get the view. There's a rock that you can also climb to the top of, and you get a view of Sigiriya. So, we're headed that way right now. It's down a dirt road. You can get there directly from the grounds of Sigiriya. Wow, 
lot more interesting and rugged hike to this one than Sagiria. This is actually kind of what I was expecting Sagiria to be like a little bit. Not to mention, we're the only ones out here right now. So there are no lines, no crowds, no waiting on stairs. And nobody. All along this hike, we've seen boulders and large rocks with what seems like twigs just kind of underneath them, supporting them in place. We're not exactly sure why they're there, but if you know, help us figure it out and drop it in the comments. If you're only coming just for the view, then only come and climb the rock. You're gonna save yourself a lot of money and a lot of time. If you're into history and you wanna see the archeological site, definitely go and check out Sigiria. But there's a really cool view of Sigiria over here. So I would come here over there. Absolutely love the both of them, so do both. Okay, Sigiria, super success, but the show must go on. So, getting on another bus, and our next stop is the coastline, and we're going to Trinco Male. Three and a half hours, might have to stand the whole way. And here we are, we finally made it to Trinco Male. We're actually staying in an area called Upu Valley at a place called Hotel Glee. Fantastic hotel, super clean rooms, and amazing staff. Yeah, so Trinco Mali is broken up into two main beach areas, Upa Valley and Nila Valley. Upa Valley is where you're probably likely going to want to stay if you plan on coming here in the near future. It's a little bit more built up, it has more food options and more hotel options. And the same thing applies to the beach. Here in Upa Valley, you'll find beach restaurants, beach chairs, paddle boarding, kayaking, boat tours, and just a lot of people relaxing and having a good time. Definitely more activities on this beach than Nila Valley. You'll find tourists and locals here, and the sand is extremely soft, and the water is this calm, really small wave just crushing in. Two things you'll want to bring, a lot of sunscreen and a lot of water because it is hot here. Very, very hot and the sun is extremely strong. Time to get in. Let's go. Water feels amazing. It's the perfect cool, crisp temperature to cool you off in this ever so hot sun. Unbearable sun. Yeah. So, a little history on the tourism here in Trinco Male. Up until 1983, this place was a booming hot spot, not only for foreign tourists, but also for locals. In 1983, that's when the Civil War started. And for 25 years, it was completely banned for anyone to come here. Well, not to mention only that, but in 2004, even during the Civil War, the tsunami happened. So whatever kind of infrastructure was existing before for tourism, not only was it wiped out for the war, but it was demolished by the tsunami. So now we're in a state of repair ever since 2009 when the Civil War ended. And what we're seeing is that kind of upwards climb of tourism again. So you have tourists along with locals on the beach and the scene's fantastic. Right now is the time that you're gonna wanna be here. Okay, so we've taken you from Sigiria to Trinco Male. If you haven't already, and you're interested, click that subscribe button, not only because it helps us out, but it also gives you first access to our latest releases, and stay tuned for next week's video. We're gonna it's a good one. We're gonna show you what else there is to do, eat, and see in Trinco Male. We're out.
another day, same story. No comment. <laughs>